Hey, this is Johanna speaking. Are we nearing the end of the material world? In our recent timeline, we have seen the energy conflict that flared up between our Russia, Europe, USA, and basically all around the world. Nations and people are having trouble acquiring the energy resources they need to continue growing their populations, to continue building, you know, cities and continue enjoying the high energy life of the modern world, driving cars, flying planes to your holiday destination. Even all your food and drinks is produced using energy. Um, in Europe and elsewhere, agriculture has mechanized to the point you just can't do without oil and gas or some source of energy to, uh, to grow your crops and to harvest the crops. Unless you are willing to switch to slave labor, which in some places is actually happening, I would say that in many um, industrial areas in Europe, there's a reason why we're importing so many immigrants, and most of them are men, because they're going to have to do the very low-cost, low-paid work that we can no longer afford machines to do. To put that in another way, immigrants are cheaper than tractors and horses, so... But from a philosophical perspective, if you look at humanity's energy needs, growing energy needs, exponentially growing energy needs, you know that this is not viable. Even if there were enough oil for the next thousand years at the present population level, that doesn't mean there will be enough oil if our population continues growing. If the human population, which has been growing exponentially for the past few centuries, continues to grow at this rate, meaning accelerating exp exponential growth, we will meet 100 billion or maybe even 500 billion inhabitants on this planet. And that means that whatever oil, gas reserves human beings have on Earth is going to run out also exponentially quickly. It could all be gone in 10 years if we allow people to procreate like rabbits. And so here you see where this elitist line of thinking comes from. Why do our ruling overlords press so hard to start uh, reducing the population? Uh, it's not new to the Western world per se. We've also seen this in China. China used to have the one child per woman policy, and you could be severely punished financially or with jail time or even otherwise for having more than one kid. China has let go of this measure because they realize they're going to need more kids to fuel their own industry, to stay on top. They want to become the number one economic player in the world. The Western world believes in freedom, quote unquote, so we cannot say to women, you're not allowed to have more than one kid. We want to make it appear as though you have a free choice in this matter. So they tell women to take the pill. The pill in the Netherlands, for example, where I'm from, came online around the 1980s, 1990s. That's when women, young women, also started taking the pill, which changes your hormonal household. It makes you temporarily infertile until you stop taking the pill. But because it was advertised as something young women should do so they could party and sleep around and have the sexual liberation that feminism promised them by being infertile, basically... Young women were fooled into thinking that their choice to be infertile, not to have children randomly, was a sort of personal freedom that they had won after sh struggles with feminism, when in reality, it is just a more clever way to sell women uh, the no child per woman or maybe the one child per woman policy. Because on average in Europe now, I think in countries like Spain, Germany, the native white women are not having more than one child per woman. It's between one and two, but it's uh, definitely dropping below one soon or has already dropped below one in Spain, where the native white women are just not having children. This is not entirely their free choice at all. That's how it's marketed. But what really happened is that the media, TV propaganda, the social controls that are in place, the, pol the politics that plays a role, has convinced women that they ought to take the pill. It has convinced men they should always use a condom or you might get AIDS. And so we've all been uh, frightened over the past few decades to believe that sex can lead to all sorts of diseases you want to avoid by playing it safe. Going double Dutch means the woman takes the pill and the man wears a condom. As a consequence of such 
psychological measures pushed by the media and the newspapers and the TV, uh, women have stopped getting pregnant uh, unexpectedly, uh, which in effect has given Europe and North America a one-child-per-woman policy. Now, the Central African populations are still booming. The Muslim world is still booming. They have tons and tons of children there. But they too will eventually have to curb their birth rates. It cannot go on forever. And that is because the energy supplies to these African nations and also to Europe and elsewhere where these people may be migrating to will eventually run out. And then kids are going to starve. There won't be food for them. There won't be housing for them. Houses cannot be built without energy, without tractors and bulldozers and, 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 and men and women building houses. They need to be fed. And so eventually everything is going to come to a stop. I don't actually believe we're going to run out of fossil fuels. Rather, we're going to run out of people willing to work for the lowest possible wages to try to extract these resources from the earth. The extraction costs are what is going to kill us all. It's going to become too expensive to get the oil out of the earth, to refine it, and then uh, turn it into diesel or gasoline or whatever. And that means the age of materialism must also come to an end. Uh, right now, what you see, though, is that um, due to the conflict with Russia, European industry is losing it. They're shutting down in many places, such as in Western Germany, the Ruhr Gebiet, the Ruhr area. And a lot of these businesses have already said that they're moving their industry to the United States. <clears throat> so what I think is going to happen is that they're go there's going to be these two camps. There's going to be these two uh, sinks of industry, meaning uh, Southeast Asia, China, and uh, North America is where industry will be. And there will be a massive competition between these two uh, poles, so to speak, economic poles. If either one of these parties, China and its allies and the US and its allies want to rule the world for some time to come, they will have to go to war with one another. So that's what the Third World War will be about. But I wouldn't have made this whole video if I didn't actually have some more philosophical point for you to take home. Namely that, if you think about sources of energy, what are you thinking of? You're thinking of oil, you're thinking of gas, wood that you can burn, uh, biofuels, like, I don't know, sunflower oil that you can burn in a car or something. You're thinking of wind and solar, you're thinking of chemical reactions, you're thinking of nuclear energy. But see what you are doing? You are looking for energy sources outside of yourself that can make your life more comfortable and easier. But there's one source of energy left that has always been there, that we're not looking at in the present timeline. And that is the energy source that you find within yourself. It is the energy source formerly known as religion. If you are a religious person, you will feel that energy inside you, in your soul, maybe in your chest area or in your head or wherever you feel it, in your gut perhaps. You feel there is this source of energy that animates you, that motivates you to do whatever you want to do in life, to go on beyond where other people have given up. When other people tire, you still have energy left to go on. This internal energy, a spiritual energy, a psychological energy, doesn't come from gas, oil, and wood, and nuclear. It comes from God. It comes from you within yourself. Uh, it comes from the spiritual energy that flows through your soul, your mind, your heart. And what I believe is, is that when the material age comes to an end, as I explained, because the extraction cost of energy are going to be too high, people simply won't be able to make a profit of it, and it won't happen. Then the machinery in the world comes to a halt. This won't happen until after the Third World War. The Third World War will burn so much fuel and energy uh, that the winners will still be crippled. But when this material age comes to an end, we're going to have to live in very different ways. This is where the traditionalist movements come into play. Those uh, people who prepare for the apocalypse, who have their bunker shelters full of food and seeds that they can use to 
plant in the new age, in the new dawn. And I, I really believe this is where it's going. Humanity is going to have to learn to live without free energy or cheap energy. And that means we're going to have to reduce our numbers will be vaporized anyway. And whoever the survivors will be in that, in that new age, the new spiritual age, they will be religious people. Because if you don't receive cheap fuels from the outside world, and you're going to have to build everything by hand, by human labor. If human labor becomes your number one, your number one source of energy, you're going to become an extremely religious society. So in conclusion, to conclude this video, I believe the very people who are already thinking about how to survive without cheap energy are going to be the ones counted among the survivors. Thank you for watching.